it's Kwanzaa time, it's Kwanzaa time. Yeah, it's Kwanzaa time, it's Kwanzaa time, it's Kwanzaa time. Yeah, it's Kwanzaa time, it's Kwanzaa time, it's Kwanzaa time. It's Kwanzaa time. It's Kwanzaa time. Yeah, it's Kwanzaa time. It's Kwanzaa time. It's Kwanzaa time. Yeah, it's Kwanzaa time. It's Kwanzaa time. It's Kwanzaa time. So, do you know you're part of our online community? Every time you watch us, you belong to CSL Dallas, and we're so happy that you're part of our community. And we love providing you this kind of spiritual message. So if you want to keep seeing this, please donate. You can donate at csldallas.org slash give, or you can text 972-954-4404. Be part of our community and sit back and enjoy the message. Well, good morning. I am so honored to be here today. Uh, this has been um, in the works for a few months. Um, I want to thank Reverend Preacher, Reverend Karen, the leadership of this church, uh, the leadership uh, and team members of the African American Circle. I have been over, not overwhelmed, but just overjoyed um, from the love and support from Darlene in particular, Oshun Lade, Damaris, um, and many others. So I was asked to come and speak for the circle uh, a few months ago, and I'm like, okay, give me about six months, I'll do it. Um, so it pushed out. I didn't realize I was coinciding with today. I thought I was going to come in and do a little drum circle or something, and um, I kept saying yes, um, and that yes led me here today. So uh, I'm very thankful to be here. Um, today is the fifth day of Kwanzaa. Uh, today's per today's uh, principle is Nia, or purpose, and so I'll be weaving that in and out throughout my talk. Um, what I want to talk about today is one of my passions that you just heard about, which is this drum. Um, I was introduced to the drum about 10 years ago. Um, I met this man named Reverend Clarence Glover uh, while I was doing some community service work and started attending some of his services and he had the drum to accompany the services. So it, it, I got a little emotional because it felt so much like when I first was introduced to this drum as I played along with the service today. So i um, grateful for that opportunity. Um, but I knew immediately after hearing him play, seeing him play, I said, I've got to have one of these. I'm like, tell me where to go. I've got to have one today. Uh, so I went out and got one. I didn't realize I was picking up a touring djembe, but I played it none the same. Um, didn't take long for him to realize that this was something that really captivated me. Um, and so he led me to some teachers. Um, so this drum, this is, is one from my first teacher, uh, a guy named Mocha, um, that I absolutely adore. So hang on to it because it's the first one that I, that I really learned to hone in my skills. Um, so I'm going to do that and talk about Kwanzaa a little bit as we go. Um, this is one of my favorite books called A Drummer's Path, The Drummer's Path by Sule Greg Wilson. He, like me on this journey probably 30, 40 years ago, um, was introduced to the drum and wrote a little handbook for drummers like me to hone in on our skills. So in here he talks about some principles that I think are great for really everyday living, but for drummers as well. And really, I want to help you see the drum and music in African art um, through the drummer's lens. Um, so I hope I share that with you and you're able to uh, connect with some of my passion. So the first principle he talks about is breath, you know, and a lot of us um, that do yoga, meditate, understand how important the breath is. Um, he explains in the book that we've got to be centered. He has this upper, he talks about an upper breath and a lower breath. This upper breath is really in our chest and he says it heats up our head and that's when we can hyperventilate, we lose our focus, we're not relaxed. Where we really want to be is navel breathing like we see children, babies, newborns breathe. Um, it's nice and effortless, um, there's no rushing, no stress. Um, and so when we play, and I know this is true for me, I, I don't 
play like I should, um, and I need to move my breath lower, um, we'll start to tense up in our shoulders, our muscles will get tense, it'll hurt, and I'll have to force things, and that's just not really good at all. Um, so we want to breathe. As drummers, when we play rhythms, you'll hear in a little bit we're going to play a rhythm, and um, it's important for us to breathe through what we call the phrases. Um, so we know what the pattern is, and we're breathing through it, and it allows everything to just flow with ease, really. So if you get the breath work correct, everything else flows. Um, he... Second principle, posture. Um, again, those of us that meditate understand how important posture is. We want to have our chakras in alignment. Um, so that energy flows through. Um, we don't want to create blockages. Um, it's possible when we're drumming, if we're not doing things right to block energy in our kidneys, which we really don't want, or other places that, that can damage us. Um, so it's important that we stay open. Um, in the book, he has some illustrations about how the drummers have energy that flows, and he's got this illustration of us you know, playing the drum and energy goes out, and we pull it back in from above, through our feet, and we have this really upper pattern of circles and lower circles. Um, and when we're breathing and have our posture right, that energy can move through us, um, and we can impart it into the community, which is, which is our goal and desire. Okay? Um, third principle, play ambidextrously. Um, this is important for me in particular right now. <laughs> Um, we want to be able to play on both sides. Um, the music is orchestrated um, in a particular way that, that we should play it. You know, when you learn a new rhythm, they're going to say, play it this way, right hand, left hand. Really, we have this thing called a circular rhythm, um, and so you want everything to be balanced. I may not play every note on every hand, on a, with, with those hands, but um, I want to keep this even movement going. I should be able to switch, instead of starting with the right, start with the left. That's particularly important when we're playing for performances um, and celebrations, or maybe a parade, and we're playing for a long time. Um, if I'm doubling on one hand, that's going to get old real quick, and I'll seize up. So I don't want to do that, so I'll switch the pattern, um, but only for relief. So you'll, we'll hear another principle that I talk about that, that says that we need to honor the way it's given. Um, but if you need relief, go back to the breath, um, and then switch things up if you need to. So that is, a, um, I'm talking to myself on that one. Um, what you'll see here um, in this book, as I got to about this point, um, it reminded me of our Science of Mind handbook. You know, Greg in this book is telling us, you know, what this drum is, you know, the thing itself, the way it works, what it does, and how to use it. So that's why I really highly recommend this book for anyone that plays drums or interested in drums to really understand really how to do it. So you don't want to hurt yourself. Um, and it's a spiritual tool, so you want to make sure that you're using it appropriately. Okay. Our fourth principle, he recommends that we should be able to sing and dance. Um, sing, dance, and play extremely well. And it should be done simultaneously. So that is really a challenge. Even today, as I was trying to sing, I'm like, okay, I can't. I've got to hold the rhythm. If I'm going to stay um, grounded and, and rooted in the rhythm, I have to just play along. But in my mind, the phrases were going by. I'm listening to the chord progression of the band um, to know where I am because we're really talking and, and saying a phrase. Um, my first teacher told me that for some of the rhythms that you play, think about a nursery rhyme, a riddle, or something, even my name, spelling our name. So I, it's T-I-M-O-T-H-Y. I inflect on certain vowels sometimes or certain letters, but as I'm playing, I might just be spelling my name. I'll know where I am, and I can keep my place. So that's, that's really important. Um, it's really important. Um, know the chants and the lit liturgy. So this one is important. Um, I'm going to read this part so I don't mess up. So we, we mentioned that I'm with a drummer with the band, Band and Choral. And so one of our mission statements is that we want to make sure that we 
um, are learning these African rhythms for the purpose of giving it back to the community. Um, so we want to honor the culture that we're imitating, because this drum comes primarily from West Africa, Ivory Coast, Guinea, Senegal, and Mali, um, that was part of the Malian empire of long ago. And so these rhythms primarily accompany rituals that happen in the community, whether it's harvest, a celebration, birth of a baby, rites of passage. Um, so we have to learn which rhythms are appropriate for different times. Um, so that's, that's part of our mission. So knowing the liturgy and the songs is important. Um, generally when we perform, or when you see African um, rhythms and dance perform, usually always accompanies a song, um, and we'll have a rhythm and then you'll have a dance. Um, for band and choral, we want to explain what those are so that you know what you're watching. Um, so that when you see the movements, um, you'll know. So some of them, is they're planting seeds, so you'll see movements like this as they're planting, or you know, men that are working and hoeing and raking in the fields, or a bird and cuckoo, or what have you. So um, we tell you what you're looking at so you can see the story and really understand the richness um, that was put into these rhythms. You know, these rhythms are ancient, very old, um, and we want to do them justice. We want to, to honor the original choreographers, if you will. Principle, that was principle five. Um, so Greg in the book tells the drummers that we have to uh, know the rhythms and the dance. So they say, I've been told, that as drummers, we're really dancing but with our hands. I'm not a dancer. I have tried to get out and hurt myself when I get out on the dance floor. So, um, in fact, my very first uh, class, my daughter will probably laugh, um, we went to our first little dance class, and I'm like, okay, both of us can dance. I have a good friend from an old church that was dancing. I'm like, if he can do it, I can do it. I didn't realize he had gone to Booker T and had all this training <laughs> and so was limber and knew exactly what he was doing. So it didn't take me but about 20 seconds to realize I could not get my feet to do what they needed to do. And instead of being on the dance floor, I needed to be on the drum line. So that's, that's how I um, started band and choral. You know, I, I kept coming to class because my daughter was probably three hanging out with some of the other children, and uh, kept going, and Tony, our director, said, hey man, you keep showing up, why don't you join us? You know, we're looking for somebody faithful that's gonna show up, um, has a thirst for knowledge, um, and wants to advance their craft, and so Bend and Coral has really um, afforded me that opportunity. Um, so we need to know the dance drummer so that we know choreography. So a lot of what Bend and Coral does is choreograph. So, you know, they're gonna do this step for eight counts, this one for this count. We're waiting for, for me what's interesting is to see the formations. So when we do some of the larger productions like, you know, the, the Winspear, Wiley Theater or whatever, on a big stage, it's important for us to know the shape. Is it a circle and they're gonna loop around? Are they coming to a triangle? So when we see the dancers get to their places, because they may not always get to it on an eight count or a 16 count, we need to know the rhythm um, and dance so that we can throw the right cues when it's time. So um, that's another reason why, reason why that's important. Number six, enjoy the feeling that you're invoking. Um, you saw me here probably rocking back and forth. There was a point where I'm like, okay, I'm really feeling this. I love it. I'm seeing familiar faces. I feel at home. I feel blessed. And I just want to just enjoy the moment. Um, we do the same thing. Um, one of the most profound mom moments that I remember is um, Bend and Coral would get invited to drum at the Freedman Cemetery, cemetery um, around the time of Harambe in October. Um, and there's just a a ring that goes around this fountain, and it's almost like a ring shout at some point. Um, but you can feel the energy transfer from drummer to dancer. The songs are going, and the energy rises. And really, we're almost, in, all of us are almost entranced. And it is just a beautiful thing. I, I look forward to having that experience because it just is, I think it's healing, healing for that community. You know, we're talking one flame, one family, one fire that happens in those circles. Um, 
Other times, we, we have Saturday classes every week at the, at the Salmon Center for the Arts, and I swear there have been times when we've been playing and the music is just so sweet that the, the drum cadence turns into just almost angelic voices. I don't know what's happening. I'm, I'm stuck in the moment, and I'm like, what's going on? I, I need to keep doing my part, because if I shift, the whole thing shifts, and I'm like, okay, i got to stay, and everybody's in the sweet spot, um, and so you have to stay there. You know, some of the other notes in these five principles, Greg says, is the whole ensemble has to be doing this. You know, it's fine for me to bring my full self, but in order for that beauty and sweetness to occur, everyone has to bring their full self to the ensemble. So the drummers, you know, on the djembe orchestration, generally everyone's playing a different part. Joyce and I are trying to play two different parts for the most part. Um, there are other drums that are part of that ensemble, and usually everybody plays their own part. No two parts play the same thing, unless it's just a big uh, line of drummers. Um, and so we have to listen to each other. Um, I think one of the next principles is, yeah, principle, no. I'm going to skip seven and come back. Principle number eight is know your orchestration. So that means I need to know what Joyce is playing. She needs to know what I'm playing. Usually there's an other drums. Because what's happening is we're all talking to each other. So you might hear some tones, some slaps, but she's talking, I respond. Um, or with, if it were a larger orchestration, you could really hear that clearly. So it's important for us to know the orchestration. Um, if someone gets off, when I was a younger drummer, um, I remember going to a conference in DC. And you go to these conferences and everybody's just really a proficient drummer, but they want new guys like me to come on. We sit on the edge of the line and the stronger drummers are gonna help us get on. So if I get off, I may be slow on the timing and they're like, uh, -uh come back on, breathe, remember where you are. Of course, I'm playing wrong and so I'm like, I can't push through as hard. And they're like, no, 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 you have to push through and you, we do, you know. I have grown more in those moments because I'm gonna have to shift how I'm playing to make sure that I'm bringing forth my tones and slaps because that's what we're really doing. We're, we're, when we play, we are actually playing the native tongue of some of these people, the Toma, the Susu, the, I don't know them all, but all of these tribes that are Senegal, Mali, Ivory Coast, Guinea. So um, the cool thing when we go to these conferences is these guys that are come from Guinea, they know their native tongue. So just as effortlessly as I'm speaking English, they're speaking Ga or whatever their native tongue is, and they're doing it with the drum. You know, there's a, there's a professor here, uh, Gideon, up at UNT, um, and I had a chance to sit with him, and he's like, Tim, they play Ghanaian drums, so it's a little different set. And he's like, Tim, when it's time for dinner, he just played this little thing on the drum. He's like, it's time for dinner. Everybody in the village knows it's time for dinner. You know, the... Drummer, they say, is uh, important in the community because they become the voice of the village elder or the king. So the king can't shout loud enough to get his message out, but when he has something to say, he will tell that drummer. That drummer knows their language. He plays it on the drum. The whole community knows, um, and they can gather and respond appropriately. But back to the seventh principle. Respect the ancestral lines. Um, this one is easy for me um, because, I, you know, for me, I know that we are imitating another culture, and to honor that culture, you have to do it the way they say do it. Um, this gets hard sometimes when we have, you know, we open up our circles and just let everybody come to join in. You know, we may say the rhythm is pa, ti pa, two rights and a left. That's the way it's supposed to be done. That's sticking with tradition. You know, of course, people want to come in, get creative, and say, oh, I want to do it this way, and it's really off. You can see the hands are off. When we're sitting and wanting to be in the zone, if somebody's doing their own thing, and half of us are sticking to tradition, you can uh, imagine the, cha the chaos it might create. Um, these notes are distinctive. You know, I'm still working on it. Our director will tell me, Tim, I need your tones and slaps to be crisper, because when you hear all of that in unison, it is very, very powerful. Um, so I have to work on it, you know. Um, there are performances that we do and they tell me, all right, all the drummers have to be mic'd, and I just cringe because I know that, that my tones and slaps aren't as crisp as they ought to be. 
And with that amplified, it just doesn't even sound good. When I, hear my, I can hear myself, and I'm like, okay, that's me. But it allows me an opportunity to adjust um, and try to bring forth that one sound. So that's, that's really powerful and important. Okay, our eighth... I already did the eighth principle. That's knowing your orchestration. Um, nine, internal, external, and peripheral awareness. Um, you know, this we talked earlier about knowing you know, what the drummers are doing. Um, we're watching the dancers. I'm dancing with my hands. It's important that we have that awareness. I, in our ensemble, if we're playing a rhythm too fast, I've got to be paying attention to those dancers' feet. They're going to tell me if they can keep up with the cadence or the pace that we're playing. Um, so I need to have that awareness. Um, we need to... <laughs> Um, we're all talking and dancing. So the drummers are primarily dan uh, dr drumming for the dancers. Collectively, we are a unit that's interacting with the audience. So we're giving each other energy, and so it's important for us to pay attention um, to that energy exchange. Um, we go lots of places where people aren't used to the African drums, and it, I tell you, it is such a drain to... Um, perform because we're not getting any energy back. Um, we want to go places where, we're, where it happens um, effortlessly. One of my favorite performances ever um, was a couple of years ago. We went out to um, TCC, I think, in Fort Worth for a performing arts conference. So everybody there knew dance because what they danced and wanted the audience to give back. So these kids were like through the rafters, you know, giving us energy back, and it was a beautiful, sweet performance that didn't even feel like we worked. We had to, I think that the conference was six hours long, and at the end of the conference, we didn't even feel it because there was this, they were giving us energy back, so we never depleted ourselves, and that was beautiful. So when you go to any performance where energy is given, give it back because the performers on this side of that stage really need it, okay? All right, our next principle. Learn techniques that are specific to your drum. In the book, uh, Greg talks about um, playing in other circles. So we do, we do as well. There are other drums that are part of the West African um, family. We have wooden log drums that are crins. We have the shaker ray that's a gourd. There are talking drums. Um, we have the big dune dune family. Um, and other drums, and so it's important that we know how to play each of those. He talked about going to, I think it was Cuba, and they played conga drums. So he knew djembe technique. He tried to get on a conga and play the conga with djembe technique, and it doesn't work. You know, you've got to cup your fingers a little bit more to bring the sound out of that drum like it should. You know, both of these drums have uh, goat skins for the head, so traditionally, you wouldn't put a stick on this drum. So you need to know kind of the rules. If I'm playing a crin, I don't want to use big, thick dune sticks because I'm going to tear the, you know, chew the wood up because my stick is too heavy. So we need to know our instruments, know the family, know the lineage. We need to know how they talk to each other, who's calling, who's responding, uh, knowing the songs, all of that ties together. So um, that's that technique. Um, I talked a little bit about this knowing the stick technique. Um, Greg, says, so Greg says that we should never play a drum and beat it into the ground. Um, traditionally in Africa, we have a set of family drums called the dunes. There's a mother, father, and child drum. Um, and traditionally, they're going to be played on their side, almost like this, and have a bell on top, and one person is going to play that rhythm. This guy's rhythm is different from that guy's rhythm and different from this guy's rhythm. All three guys are playing something different. The bell pattern and the stick patterns are all different. Um, when the African ballets came to America years ago, um, I th I'm told that sometimes they didn't have enough people, they couldn't bring enough people to play three drums or four drums, whatever the orchestration called for. So somebody invented what's called the ballet style. So we put the drums up on their side and that allows one person to basically take the three parts, combine them, and create one rhythm so that we have a smaller um, orchestration. So I believe that's fine. You know, we have to do what we have to do. But traditionally, we try to play traditional um, as much as possible. So uh, we want to know, know those instruments. Um, and then the last principle he talks about is 
um, orchestrating with other uh, percussion instruments. So even though I know my drum and I can play my drum, I know bass tone, slap, flam, this, that, and the other, I need to know how to perhaps do that same thing with a shaker or a tambourine or whatever the other instrument is so that I can um, participate in other ways. You know, that's, that's part of us being ambidextrous and um, bringing forth this rich rhythm and culture um, in other ways. So these principles um, that I've talked about, I, th I believe coincide nicely with Kwanzaa. You know, Kwanzaa, the first principle is unity. You know, bringing this rhythm and orchestration together absolutely requires um, unity. So we get to see the Emoja principle um, personified. Kuji Chagalia, self-determination. You know, that's required of me. I've told you some of my deficits when it comes to the drum. Um, so I have to put the, the principle of Kuji Chagalia to work all the time throughout the year um, so that I better myself, um, improve my skills, um, so that I'm able to bring forth and feel comfortable talking about um, this drum and this, this, this culture that I love. Uh, Ujima, collective work and responsibility. You know, band and choral, we sit down to do a, chore, uh, to do a, a show you know, somebody says, uh, we want to have you, this is what we're going to do, um, we get to put that principle to, um, to, at work. You know, we'll go places where um, we know how we typically dance a particular rhythm, but they're going to say, well, no, my stage is only this big, I only want three of you guys on stage, the rest of you down here. We need to know how to be adaptive um, and creative so we can still be true to our art form um, while giving our clients or you know, the folks that we're per performing for, what they want as well. Uh, cooperative economics, you know. We help each other out. My drums, you know, I've got a few people that I make sure that I support when I need a new skin. You know, I'm cooperating with this person that I know. I need new rope, I've got a place I go for rope. Um, even the shells, you know, there's a place that I go to get all of my shells. So I wanna, for drummers, we wanna make sure that we're getting the right equipment, you know. Um, these drums have to be hand carved, hewn out properly. There's a lot of guys out there now that are like, oh no, I'm going to put this thing on a lathe, spin it around, I can get the same shape. It looks the same, does not sound the same, does not play the same. So it has to, we've got to stick with tradition if we're going to do it right, otherwise the sound that comes out isn't even right. So um, that's the cooperative economic show for me. Today, um, Nia is our principal, fifth day of Kwanzaa. Um, when we know our purpose, to me, this is the foundation. Everything else can build on top of this. If we know um, what our purpose is and we unite, we build on top of it and then everything else just kind of works together. The next couple of days, uh, tomorrow's principal is Kumba, which is creativity. Uh, so I just spoke about that. You know, what we're doing is absolutely creative. Um, in, in this form and what we do in our personal lives. At, ben, at Bank of America as a business analyst, you know, I enjoy working with data. Um, and so I have to sometimes find new ways to get this data. I'll have a request that comes in and they want this a certain way. So I've got to do research, figure it out, and then give them what they want. And a lot of times I have to be creative uh, to bring that forward. And then our last principle is Imani or faith. Um, and that in the context of our ensemble, we're have, we have faith in each other, that Tim is gonna show up fully the way he's supposed to, Joyce is gonna show up the way she's supposed to, our dancers, everybody does their part, and so we know that we're gonna create something beautiful, something excellent, something that's going to um, manifest what we really want. Um, so we have, to, we have to have faith in each other. Of course, we have faith in our lives, um, relying on source for all sorts of things. Um, I am thankful for the team here. I was on vacation a couple of days ago and thought I was gonna be stuck in New Mexico. And I've heard a number of times today that the team here prayed the other night that we could get back in time, get back in town in time so that I could be here talking to you this morning. So I am uh, grateful for that. So, that is really what I, what I wanted to present for you today. Um, in a few moments, uh, in the tradition, uh, tra tradition of 
um, sharing the rhythm correctly, you're going to see a rhythm in dance called lamba. You're going to hear the song. You're going to see movement. You're going to hear the drum. So we have an opportunity to kind of demonstrate this for you um, in person. So I'm thrilled about that. Lamba comes from Guinea, West Africa. Uh, the um, Susu people in one country. Um, depending on who you talk to, you get to sometimes get different stories. Somebody from Guinea. So this rhythm could be played in Guinea, Ivory Coast, Mali, um, Guinea. Oh, did I say Guinea already? Anyway, it can be played. So depending on the ethnic group, they may play it a little bit differently or they're going to tell you it means something different. Um, what's in common is that this rhythm is played to honor the jellies or the storytellers in the community. Um, and it's just a song and dance that just dotes praise on them. Um, over time, this rhythm has now been used to honor peop great people. So somebody gets an award, somebody important, um, we may be at their celebration and perform this rhythm. Um, for me as a drummer, oftentimes we'll go to funerals and we'll play this rhythm to honor um, our departed one um, and to lift them up and sing praises along with their celebration. So. That's going to happen here in a few minutes. Um, I wanted to leave you with one little thing that I got from Pastor Glover many years ago. Um, he was the African American Studies professor at uh, SMU and had the pleasure of having one of the members of Sounds of Blackness in their class. And he says, he tells me, that they sat to, down together and pinned this little thing. So it's the, the preamble. Prelude to Sounds of Blackness, if you're familiar with that song. It says, in the beginning was the beat. The beat is the rhythm of God. The rhythm of God is the heartbeat of humanity. Where there's harmony, there is peace. Ashe, ashe, ashe. Thank you. So we present now Lamba.
Let's just take that in. Just take in that breath right here, right now. Feel that spirit, feel the rhythm moving in you as you, knowing that Christ consciousness that is showing up today as Kwanzaa. For I know that in this right now moment, I give thanks for all that has unfolded, all that will continue to unfold from this point forward, knowing that we give thanks for all the blessings of the earth, the honor of the great goodness, which is manifest in all of creation, knowing that we call forth right here, spirit of Kwanzaa, knowing that it is infused in every aspect of our daily lives, that we may constantly remember the benefits and obligations and diversity of family, community, nationhood, radically inclusive, happening right here and right now. As we remember the principles of Umoja, unity. Kuji Chakalia, self-determination. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. Ujima, cooperative economics. Nia, purpose. Kaumba, creativity. And Imani, faith knowing that as we take in these principles for our lives, no matter who you are, where you are, that these principles are, can be lived every day. For I know that that's how spirit operates in us, as us, that it unfolds in these amazing ways and so much more. For I know that our lives, as we celebrate Kwanzaa, that it is perfect. It is amazingly blessed and at every area unfolds beyond our wildest imagination. And during the Kwanzaa, there are the candles that are lit. And those candles also represent that light that's within us. So I know that that light that's within us as we embody these principles, that we get to share that with the world, wherever we go, however we move in the world and then work in traffic, wherever it is that we're doing in our communities and our families, that these principles are that Christ consciousness that resides within us, that there is no separation, that there is just the oneness. So I know that as these principles become beacons for our lives in service, humility, unity, faith, love, and strength, I know that we are truly abundantly blessed. And so I close this prayer and I ask you to join me in affirming Aho, Aho. Amin, Amin, Amen, Amen. Ashe, Ashe, and so it is. And so it is.